Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting differential equation. I call this interesting because we have the second derivative being divided by the original function y. So y is a function of x, the second derivative of y, which is y double prime divided by y equals 4x squared plus 2. And we're going to be solving for y. Can y be a polynomial? Let's go ahead and give it a try. Since we have a difference of two degrees, like the original first and the second derivative, I'm just going to assume that y is a quartic polynomial. So I can write it as ax to the fourth plus bx cubed plus cx squared plus dx plus e, where a, b, c, d, e are real constants. And then if you differentiate once, you're going to get 4ax cubed plus 3bx squared plus 2cx plus d. And then one more time for the second derivative, you're going to get 12ax squared plus 6bx plus 2c or not 2c. It wasn't planned, it just came up. Now we're going to go ahead and look at the quotient or the ratio of these two things. If you divide something like 12ax squared divided by 6bx plus 2c by ax to the fourth, so on and so forth, I don't, have, even, even, I don't even have to write the whole thing, equaling 4x squared plus 2, uh-oh, that's not going to work. It's actually the other way around, right? If you divided a quartic by a quadratic, you could expect to get a quadratic, but it's not this way. So, it can't be a polynomial. You can try different degrees. It's not going to work. So, here's what we're going to do instead. We're going to assume a form for y. So, for example, if y is logarithmic, right? Let's say y is something like ln x. It's not going to work again because you're going to differentiate it. You're going to get a quotient. This may or may not work. I haven't tried it actually. But if you quickly do that, this is going to be the second derivative divided by the original because the original is ln and we don't have that in the equation. It's not going to work. What else can it be? Maybe trigonometric? Again, it's not going to work. One thing that might disappear, because here's what happens. You kind of need a complex function so that when you differentiate it twice and divide it by the original, something should cancel out, disappear, leaving us with a quadratic polynomial. And guess what that could be? It could be e to the power something, right? So what if y is equal to e to the x? But the thing is, if you differentiate this millions of times, you're still going to get the same thing. Maybe it is e to the power a constant times x. Again, this is going to be the same thing. It's just going to bring a constant. Their ratio is not going to be quadratic. Hmm. This kind of tells me, can it be e to the power a polynomial? Could be, right? So here's what we're going to assume. We're going to assume that y can be written as e to the power t, where t is a function of x. I mean, it doesn't have to be a polynomial, but chances are, it's going to be a polynomial. So let's go ahead and plug this into our equation. By the way, the reason why I call this video a differential equation Wolfram Alpha cannot solve is because I plugged it in and uh-oh, this is the solution that I got. Maybe this solution makes sense. Who knows, right? Maybe I don't understand the notation, but what does this mean? The negative uh, first derivative, the zeroth derivative, and anyways, if someone knows what this means, please explain to us and everyone else, whoever doesn't know what this means in the comment section down below, okay? This didn't make sense to me. Maybe that's a valid solution. Who knows? But we're going to assume y can be written as e to the power t, okay? Let's pick it up from there. y is equal to e to the power t. And then now we're going to do, what we're going to do is basically differentiate it. Remember, t is a function of x. So kind of like f of x, right? Or t of x. So when we differentiate it, we have to consider the chain rule, right? We didn't have to do that with e to the x because the derivative of x with respect to x is 1. Okay, anyway, so let's go ahead and differentiate this. The derivative of e to the some function is e to the same thing times the derivative of the inside. And I'm going to differentiate this one more time. So this is the product rule, the derivative of e to the t, which you already see there, times the second function, which is t prime. Again, one more time. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. 
plus the derivative of the second one, which is the already a derivative. So second derivative multiplied by the first function. So by using the product rule, we got this, but let's simplify this a little bit. Notice that e to the power t can be factored out. And inside we have something like this. Hmm, this is interesting. This is going to make this equation non-linear. Uh-oh, that's an interesting case, right? Plus the second derivative. Okay, because the derivative is raised to the second power, this is a non-linear differential equation. And obviously, solving those equations are harder than the linear cases. But again, I'm going to show you a quick method. Maybe not necessarily a method, but hopefully get the idea. So we have to solve for t, but first let's go ahead and set up our ratio. y double prime divided by y is going to be e to the power t times t prime squared plus t double prime. And that's divided by e to the t because that's what I assumed for y, right? So now let's go ahead and cancel out e to the t that can never be zero. And we're going to end up with something like this. But remember... In the original equation, we had a polynomial on the right-hand side. So now we can go ahead and set this equal to that. Great. Let's go ahead and rewrite it. Let's make it a little cleaner. t prime squared plus t double prime equals 4x squared plus 2. Remember, t is a function of x, so you can definitely guess and check, right? Because if you try to solve it normal methods, how do you solve it? How do you solve nonlinear differential equations? That would be a good question. We'll talk about that later. But for now, let me just tell you that I think t is a quadratic polynomial. And the reasoning behind that is because if you differentiate t once, you're going to get a linear. If you square that, you're going to get a quadratic. If you differentiate t twice, you're going to get a constant. Add it to the quadratic, you'll get a quadratic. Make sense? Okay. So if t is a polynomial, it has to be quadratic. Let's go ahead and differentiate t twice, first once, 2ax plus b, and then one more time is going to give us 2a again, that is going to be a constant. We're going to go ahead and add this expression squared with this. So 2ax plus b squared plus t double prime, which is 2a, equals 4x squared plus 2. So basically, by setting these equal to e each other, because this, these are two polynomials that are true uh, for each values of x, and they will, their coefficients have to be the same. So when you expand this, this is going to be 4a squared x squared plus 4abx plus b squared plus 2a. Now notice that this is equal to 4x squared plus 2. So there is no x on the right hand side, so this needs to be 0. The coefficient of x squared is 4, so this needs to be 4, and this needs to be 2. Great, we get three equations. Let's start with the first one, 4a squared equals 4. This gives us a equals 1 or a equals negative 1. We kind of have to go through both. The second one is actually really significant because this gives us a equals 0 or b equals 0, but a equals 0 is impossible from the first equation. So b has to be 0. We're left with one choice. And that's nice because in the third equation, I do know that b is 0. So this becomes 2a and then 2a equals 2 meaning that a equals 1, which is already verified here. So that means a equals negative 1 is also impossible, which kind of gives us a unique solution, right? Or is that not the case? Anyways, we have a winner. Yay, a equals 1 wins. And since we said that, suppose t can be written as ax squared plus bx plus c, then t becomes x squared. And remember, t was a function of x. And we were not looking for t, we were looking for coffee. I mean, y. <laughs> and you're like, why? Anyways, we were looking for y, you know that, right? So y was written as e to the power t. And since t is x squared, from here y should be e to the power x squared. Now, you can go ahead and check it out, like differentiate it twice and plug it in, and you'll see that it satisfies the equation. That's for you. But, the million dollar question is, could there be another solution? I'm asking because we have a nonlinear differential equation. Remember, we had t prime squared plus t double prime equals 4x squared plus 2. So if you try to solve this equation, shouldn't you get more than one solution? What do you think? Let us know in the comment section down below. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.